Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying a restful, if not exciting weekend. A few weeks ago, I made a video wherein I mentioned that Israel had told the United States that time was quickly running out on diplomatic means of solving Israel's Hezbollah problem on its northern border. To recall, shortly after the Hamas conducted mega terror attack on Israel on October 7, Hezbollah decided to launch daily rocket attacks on Israel to the tune of 2,000 launches since then in order to show solidarity with Hamas's war efforts and aims. Consequently, 80,000 Israeli citizens have been evacuated and are currently living in hotels in various resorts around Israel, namely in Eilat and at the Dead Sea. This cannot, of course, become the new normal, and Israel has been warning that, barring a diplomatic solution, it will be forced to launch an all-out war in order to distance Hezbollah from its northern border and communities, per the requisite of the last United Nations brokered ceasefire between the two nemeses following their last war in the summer of 2006. That ceasefire agreement stipulated that Hezbollah must not place its forces or personnel south of the Litani River, about 10 miles north of the border of Israel. But in the ensuing years, Hezbollah drifted southward and built up fortifications along the border with Israel, to which Israel unfortunately turned a blind eye. Then everything hit the proverbial fan on October 7, and the border between Israel and Lebanon has been on fire ever since. A few weeks ago, I predicted that the war may be just a couple of weeks away, and it now looks like game on. Why? Because Israel has issued Hezbollah an ultimatum that if it doesn't retreat from the border by March 15, Israel will launch a war to forcibly remove it. Why March 15? Well, this is where things get interesting. You see, the holy month of Ramadan begins tomorrow on March 10. The United States, together with Europe, has put tremendous pressure on Israel to agree to a ceasefire with Hamas in exchange for the restoration to Israel of her hostages taken on October 7, before Ramadan commences. This is because the United States administration believes that the scenes of war carnage from Gaza will agitate the world's Muslims possibly to the point of causing the war to spread and go regional. Now, President Biden has been so desperately seeking this ceasefire in order to placate the progressive wing of his party and the pro-Hamas city of Dearborn in the all-important swing state of Michigan. The problem is Hamas has refused to play ball. They refuse to even provide Israel with a list of those hostages who remain alive, let alone agree to releasing them at all. So, no ceasefire. So, what do I think will happen? I think that Israel will placate the U.S. by pushing the Gaza issue to the side over Ramadan, but exploit this pause in the fighting in Gaza to instead go all out against Hezbollah. Why? Because Israel will be able to focus all of its military might on Hezbollah, but that's not all. You see, Hezbollah, unlike Hamas, is a Shiite militia. The Shiites comprise only 13% of the Islamic world and are hated by the Sunni majority. Remember, the only thing that unites these Muslims is their hatred for the infidel Jews. So, Israel is figuring that the scenes of carnage coming out of Shiite population centers of Lebanon won't stir the rage of the Muslim world, as would similar scenes from Rafah in Sunni Muslim Gaza Strip. Thus, in this manner, Israel may intend to wisely allay the anger of the much larger Sunni world while going after Shiite Iran's most powerful militia in the region. Now, what's the downside for Israel? There's a couple. Hezbollah is in possession of an estimated 200,000 rockets and missiles, several of which are guided by GPS, unlike Hamas's more primitive arsenal. 
And lastly, it may consign Israel's remaining hostages to their deaths. Why? Because the only hope to return them was through military pressure and preventing Hamas from getting its hands on much needed foodstuffs and gasoline for its fighters. Back in November, Israel succeeded to reduce Hamas to such dire straits that they restored nearly one half of the hostages to Israel. But the Biden administration is strong-arming Israel to give this away, their only leverage to get the hostages back for free. It's a stark and simple truth. There is an inverse relationship between the welfare of Gaza civilians and that of the Israeli hostages. It's one or the other. The more desperate the Gazans are, the more pressure on Hamas to release the Israeli hostages. But the more their suffering is alleviated by American food drops, much of which slides into Hamas's hands anyway, the more Hamas is able to stiffen its stance and refuse to release the hostages. Anyway, this is Steve, the tour guide, with today's Israel update, wishing you a safe and uneventful Ramadan. Bye-bye.